W-E-F-U-N-K. We funk. Like we were saying, this is the first geeked up of 2021 and uh, excited to watch WandaVision. But there's other stuff coming out this year that's uh, coming out in 2021. Some movies and TV shows that we're excited for in this upcoming year. So we're taking a closer look at some of the things we're more excited for than the other. And uh, I guess I'll start with uh, a lot of these two we've probably talked about because they were movies. A lot of them were movies that were supposed to come out in 2020. So I'm just as excited yeah. to see it this year too. I like, guess that uh, could Black be something Widow. that we've talked about a little bit, but as well just the fact that because of so many movies getting delayed last year, there might be a little bit of like an overload on movie releases for this year, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because they had a lot of, you know, obviously movies prepared to come out in 2021 that were in production and all set to go. So a lot of those will get released as well. In addition to all the ones that were delayed from 2020, a lot of movies will get delayed that were released, supposed to be released in 2021. There'll be like the trickle down delays and all that. But 2021 might be like an exciting year for movie releases, albeit at home virtual releases or in theaters eventually throughout the year. But which is the one that you were mostly, well, which one that you're going to kick it off with, though? You I said, mean, Black Widow, dude. I've been talking about it since last year. I know. We've been I waiting mean, for we were just talking about Spider-Man reason, but Homecoming I... for this one, you know? I want to see it, you know. Again, she's another one that died in the Avengers, you know, Bradley Cooper, spoiler alert. But this one's like a prequel. Uh, it takes place, you know, I think we've tried to talk about it to death already, but it takes place after the Civil War movie, but before the last Avengers. Yeah. So it's just, it's just a movie that's been a long time coming that, like, now, do you I think that there's already. any chance that maybe the delay of Marvel movies, and especially the uh, this is going to do a lot for the Marvel movies because we're not going to send Spider-Man Far From Home until I'd say probably Doctor Strange or whatnot. There'll be a couple of releases, the Eternals, some other ones, but not like a huge major character release for a long time. Is there any chance that there's a little bit of like uh, throws people off the fever pitch of excitement? That Marvel had, you know, they were banging these movies out one after another throughout those first three Avenger, you know, headline mm-hmm. movies. Now, do you think that maybe we've taken like pretty much a full year off? We're going to come back with Black Widow, The Eternals. When does uh, uh, it won't be till next year till we get Doctor Strange? Any chance that maybe there's like a cool down on the on the Marvel? I mean, maybe because I mean. Let's be honest, too. After uh, like the last Avengers movie, they pretty much like grounded out their story. Yeah, like, I mean, that really was everyone... the end of season one, as mm-hmm. we were calling it, like in the movie world, you know what I mean? But it's like, that really was the, uh, they were establishing some seeds for the future, but that was, like you said, the end of the storyline. So food for thought, we should have brought it up earlier in the show, probably, than our closer look segment, but uh, a lot riding on that Black Widow movie, though, in some regards, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If that's a real dud, well, that could really throw things off for the franchise. And how about I mean, too. How about I, how about I answer uh, answer your uh, uh, Black Widow with the Suicide Squad, with another female-led yeah. uh, with the DC uh, CU, but the Suicide Squad, of course, n- n- uh, not our favorite first DC movie. You know what I mean? The first Suicide mm-hmm. Squad, the Harley Quinn character, obviously, was really really popular, but uh, uh, that could be an interesting one. But the well, DC- that because. Also, uh, James Gunn is directing this one, too. The guy that directed yep. all the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. So yep, it's yep. going to be a different film. For sure. So, and definitely yeah. I could see James Gunn lining up well with Suicide Squad, what they were trying to go for, the tone that they're trying to have with that character and whatnot. You know? So that could be interesting. Mm-hmm. But uh, 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 that could be an interesting one for DC. A couple of uh, uh, some big budget flicks uh, 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 as well, though. How about maybe like a Godzilla vs. Kong? Or a Dune. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope Godzilla vs. Kong comes out in fall. You know what I mean? So we can see it in the theaters. Tenet, go fuck yourself. I can watch you at TV. <laughs> okay, but yeah. I want to watch these giant monsters beat the shit out of each other on a big screen. Yeah, that's a All great right? call. That's a theater. That's a Netflix and chat kitschy question style. Would I? Am I going <laughs> to the theaters? Fuck yeah. Uh, uh, however, that does really feel like a summer movie release. You know what I mean? It, how, does, it does. However, you're right, though. I definitely got to see that one in the theater. But, I mean, that's definitely just like the converging of two of the iconic franchises. They haven't ever really done a good fucking Kong movie either. The last bunch of them have been... Uh, or a Godzilla movie, rather. Skull but, Island wasn't bad. And the last couple Godzilla movies were kind of shit. Yeah, I meant Godzilla. Skull Island was all right. Yeah. But the uh, last couple, they haven't really done a good Godzilla movies 
since the Jack Black Broderick, of course, which was a, <laughs> which was a home run. But, uh, so that one could be interesting, and then as well as Dune, Major, yeah. you know, could be a could be a as well as Dune, you know, that could be a big one. It is, and that's one of those ones too that HBO announced that it was like it's coming out the same day as on HBO than the theaters. Okay, yes. So, that's you know gonna be I mean? HBO. How about, Max? There's also uh, the Ghostbusters movie. The uh, you know when everyone shit on the all female one, they're like, all right, don't worry, we're making a direct sequel with Paul Rudd. It's all guys again. <laughs> yeah. As well as so once they realize, I'd say that this is definitely our biggest category of movies. I say 2021 is the year of the reboot, but we'll start off with Ghostbusters, where definitely, like you said, the all female version, which was like a new whole, you know, it was the same concept, but a whole new, you know, a, mm. a whole new everything. This is now like a direct sequel to the old gang. You know what I mean? So we're right. going to definitely get That's some right. cameos. We're definitely going to get a Bill Murray cameo and an Aykroyd cameo. Uh, it's what uh, 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 no Harold Spangler's uh, yeah, right. uh, Spangler's uh, son or something is the main character in the movie. Yeah, I think it's his grandson. It's the fucking kid from uh, Stranger Things. Oh, nice. Which yeah. one? The uh, the one that's getting all the work for some reason. Mike. Okay, the one that loves Eleven. Yeah, right, yeah, I, see, yeah. I see, I see, So my, I didn't realize Mike from uh, Stranger Things was starring in it. Okay, sick. Yeah, yeah. So, he's a little Egon. Okay, nice. So that sounds perfect. Perfect casting job right off the bat. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the Ghostbusters reboot, how about maybe the uh, Top Gun reboot, Maverick? Maverick. Oh, man. The only way that movie could be better is if it was Maverick from the Mel Gibson movie, Maverick. <laughs> If they just uh, a, went away with Tom Cruise. A mix Cruise. of the world, Who dude, needs yeah. Tom <laughs> In an Avengers-esque uh, or a King Kong versus Godzilla, it's a, a Top Gun versus a Maverick v. Maverick, if you will. Yeah, I mean, talk about the uh, like a, a reboot that nobody fucking needed or like a story that we didn't need any continuation to or anything like that. But mm -hmm. just like an iconic title to fucking sell merchandise and like who's not going to go see – what dude our age is not going to go see the fucking new Top Gun? However, Look, why the fuck I've are they making the guy it? Damn, like, I've worn the goddamn jumpsuit for like the last seven Halloween. Oh, yeah, you I, can I, like uh, cosplay to this one. <laughs> just fucking yeah. – you're showing up in your Maverick fucking uh... – <laughs> You're goddamn right I am, dude. <laughs> dude, speaking of another reboot, uh, what about Spiral? The uh, Saw reboot with Chris Rock. <laughs> yes. And Samuel L. Jackson, I believe. That's correct. Yes, that's right. Samuel yeah, L. Jackson. So this is one where it's like, uh, uh, sounds <laughs> too good to be in my category of these hilarious, shitty reboots from the 90s. But this one I'm actually like excited for. You know what I mean? I was not a huge fan. The first Saw was, was good. I guess the first maybe couple, but I just was not a huge fan of like the disturbing imagery side of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, you know, you get Chris Rock and Samuel L. In it for the first one's very good. The, yeah, all the rest yeah. of them are what you the said. Are all like, like the creepy, you know, there is some violence and whatnot, but it's just got that creepy, violent undertone where you it's know the more of a thriller. The, like I've always said, the first one kind of reminds you of like Kiss the Girls, like the Morgan Freeman movie. You know what I mean? Like, there's definitely like a crazy killer, but most of it's like the mystery of who it is. Yeah, yeah. For and sure. then all the other ones are like, do you want to watch people chop their arms off? It's like, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good. Because we're gonna make, already paid. The we're gonna make nine of them. So... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess this isn't really a reboot, but another sequel. Before we get into some more hilarious reboots, but another sequel that's coming out this year that I'm somewhat interested in. But uh, how about Quiet Place Two? coming up mm -hmm. the first one was actually better one. than i thought this is one where it just like doesn't really make sense to be making i feel like this is the story would have been better left alone however due to its popularity they probably shoehorned mm -hmm. in a second one but i'm excited uh this is the, that's another one too that was supposed to come out last year and okay yeah like like that and black widow were like about to come out and then COVID hit and i was like <laughs> none of that um, I mean, but the other hilarious sequels, what about a Space Jam 2 is coming out this year with uh, LeBron James. LeBron, LeBron. <laughs> of course. And, of Don, course. and Don Cheadle. I really hope Don Cheadle is taking over the Wayne Knight role in, uh, in this one. <laughs> I mean, Don Cheadle is the Wayne Knight of, uh, for, for a new generation. <laughs> He's the Newman of a new generation. 
But, yeah, Space Jam 2, I guess that's one that, again, from the uh, nobody was asking for it except LeBron. Like, the only person that wanted a reboot of this one was LeBron, and he's rich and famous enough to get it done. So... Dude, this is hilarious. I'm looking at my list now, and like most of these movies are all sequels or reboots. Yeah. Because what about coming to America? All right, this is probably like top of my list for most uh, (laughs) (laughs) for movies I'm most excited for. But Eddie Murphy's back, as we talked, as we as we cataloged last year with Dolomite. But a big year coming up for Eddie Murphy. But back in the comedic role, one of the all-time classic movies. You know what I mean? Definitely a different uh, uh, era of comedy. Doing a comedy movie as well, third years apart where you know just the world of comedy has changed so much it'll be really interesting to see if eddie murphy can put together like another classic on the resume which after dolomite i'm not holding it i'm not holding it against him you know what i mean no dolomite was fucking great dude and Eddie Murphy's really great, good. so like, and coming to yeah, America is great, you know. And just compared to Top Gun, or I guess we'll run through some of the other uh, uh, reboots, and then we'll at the end maybe decide which is our favorite reboot. But uh, how about okay. as well? We've talked about it before. The Matrix, Matrix Four. Matrix Four is coming out. I it's mean, if, if Matrix one. Two and Three weren't shitty enough, we'll see if Number Four <laughs> Matrix is Four. Uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? They're being very secret about that movie. But uh, there's another four coming out, too, in the sequel world. What about uh, Jackass 4 will be coming out this year? No way. I didn't realize. <laughs> the gang's getting back together and shoving things up their ass <laughs> one last time. Even though, even though that they're sober and, like, now 50, yeah. they're still shoving th- Hilarious. Well, Steve-O, yeah, still does. Bam Margera looks like a fucking mess. Um, How does Bam Margera And Ryan like- Dunn is dead. Yeah, okay. Well, Ryan Dunn is uh, a RIP to Ryan Dunn, of course, to the to, to my uh, second favorite wild boy. But I thought Bam had, like, sought the help of Dr. Phil and, like, straightened himself out. Is he is he falling off the wagon again, or...? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think he keeps he keeps falling off the wagon, but, like, okay, he's a mess. Like, I don't know. Even sober, though. Like, steve sobered up after, like, fucking shoving heroin up his ass and, like, putting Jack Daniels in IVs, and he looks better than ever. Yeah, but, but he's, like, just as up. crazy. Even Steve-O Silver's yeah. like, yeah, so this week I'm going to set myself on fire up in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he doesn't, like, he's just, he, like, he hasn't stopped, he hasn't slowed down a minute <laughs> due to sobriety. Yeah. Like, he's just insane, Steve-O. Bam, yeah, Bam ain't skateboard professionally no more. That's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, and then, of course, Knoxville is fucking, uh, is, uh, yeah, Knoxville uh, lives for that shit. Yeah, exactly. But okay, so I mean, I'm definitely gonna see it. Is it gonna be as good as? Uh, I mean, so far they haven't missed. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah, so that's far, true. The first three have been fucking. And uh, even when I try to like think about them, I'm like, those are dumb. Like, think about it. But like, if it's ever like pops on like HBO or like, even MTV or something, dude, I watch like ten minutes of it. Like, dude, this is fucking. Hilarious. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I'm laughing out loud at these fucking <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> How about Wee Man? Is Wee Man? Do I have a feeling that Wee Man has passed, or is he still hanging in there? I think he's alive. Hopefully, okay. I, you know, I don't know. I think I maybe know the long. fat guy has died, though, right? I don't think Ryan Dunn's the only R.I.P. from the Jackass Boys. No, I think Preston Layton. I think it was his name. Yeah, that guy's got to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> no way Preston made it but <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if he's dead or not but R.I.P. to Preston and R.I.P. to Ryan Dunn and p- potentially another one how about uh, Uncle Vito or whatever the fuck I think he's dead <laughs> Uncle Vito's definitely dead Pam's uncle dude I went to uh, funny story dude, I went to go visit my sister when she was in college once in Orlando and we were just like hanging out and she was just like dude if you <laughs> she was like there's a party going down the road you gotta pay twenty dollars to get in because uncle vito is there so i was like oh dude fuck yeah <laughs> did, you guys pay the, did you guys throw down the <laughs> 20 she, or what? she didn't want to go in the end i was like come on she's like no we'll go to the school bar instead i was like what <laughs> i was like let's go to this 20 dollar uncle vito party dude seriously <laughs> Like an amazing public appearance by second only to Wilford (laughs) Brimley at the fucking dog track poker table would be, uh, uh, dude. But, uh, the only other sequel I can think of is the only one I'd be kind of excited about just in case we get another shitty Eminem song would be, uh, Venom 2. Let there be carnage (laughs) because somehow that movie got greenlit for a sequel. Yeah. I mean, superhero movies are so huge and you can't be holding on to like that title, in a franchise, you know what I mean? Like, you can't have Venom mm-hmm. and then fucking fuck up so bad that you only do one in this franchise superhero world, you know? So they're going to get yeah. two Venoms out of it. But 
We didn't like the first one. Definitely. Uh, we'll see what they do. We have any clue on the second one? Or they do they have a whole yeah, man. team? Everything. Woody going? Harrell's is a different team, and it's also Sony is now trying to like they're trying to integrate their yeah, movies into the MCU. Him in also, I'm sure, somewhere right. Like, so I think there's like, going to be like a maybe a Spider-Man cameo in it. Okay, but Woody Harrelson is playing Carnage. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. If hilarious, because if you remember the end of the first Venom, it was Woody Harrelson in that big fucking carrot top wig. <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's the bad guy in this one, wearing that same wearing big shed. red wig. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. All right. Well, I mean, I'm seeing it, uh, <laughs> but again, but again, just like I said, they can't really, especially with Spider-Man and all. Like, there's no way that they can fuck. They, they're got to give a second chance to such an iconic mm. character with such big, you know, potential right now. Yeah. But I guess I got a couple more reboots from the hilariously cheesy category. Uh, one movie and then one kind of TV show. Uh, and by, by reboot, I mean like Blast from the Past anyway. But uh, I guess a couple from the TV. I think I know what you're going to say for, the, for that. Well, for uh, it, uh... The, the movie, first of all. But there is a Mortal Kombat movie coming out yes. as well in 2021. Okay. Which, I mean, I actually liked the fucking first Mortal Kombat movie from the 90s. That one, that in Street Fighter. We were kids, obviously. But I thought they I were just... both. Like, like fun superhero movies i just liked the mortal Kombat soundtrack where it was just that guy screaming mortal Kombat over that techno song oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. that's a fascinate only song if yeah, i've ever heard one say, that's fucking gym class uh gym class for sure <laughs> but uh uh and then as well i guess a couple and as well there's a lot of great just characters in mortal Kombat or video game movies I, a little uh, suspect but you want to give some guess, guesses uh, on my tv shows I think I know it. Your blast from the past is it? Name that tune because it's also I'm very excited about name that tune is back. Okay, good which call. Oh, we said should be rebooted and it finally is. Nice, good call. I've always felt I'd be a master at that one as well, so I'm willing to uh, uh, watch and challenge all competitors as the game goes along. So that's a good one. But no, I was that clearly was I was clearly going with the Friends reunion. <laughs> the HBO Max, like, there's really like a Friends experience. Fuck, New York City is shut down, except the Friends Experience store downtown. That's like the only thing going in Manhattan. Cuomo gave the green light to the fucking Friends uh, reality. But you show. know, the Friends thing isn't going to be like an episode of Friends. It's going to be like the Fresh Prince reunion, where they're all just going to be sitting around and like talking their, about their time on Friends. Well, good enough for me, goddammit. I want to, uh, <laughs> yeah. I just want to see the gang all back together. But, I mean, uh, uh, the Big Friends reunion. As well, there's a Mighty Ducks. I got to think this one's going to be more for kids. But a Mighty Ducks TV series coming out on Disney+. Plus. So, I'm all listening. Right, I wasn't aware of that. Netta Raw already was... gave me the free membership. So, uh, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> I can check it out, you know. I've been I'll loving Animaniacs on Hulu. Ducks. So, maybe, maybe, just maybe. Mm-hmm. Animaniacs on Hulu has been stellar. Um, yeah, man. I mean, for TV, I would just say, like, uh, in the leagues with WandaVision, the other Marvel shows that will be coming out this year, Loki, Falcon, Winter Soldier, and the What If series, I'm really excited to see. Yeah, and of course, for Loki, uh, is, uh, Loki especially looks cool, for sure. And then, of course, the season three of Mandalorian, and, of course, the Boba Fett series coming out all in 2021. Towards the very, very end of 2021, but 2021 nonetheless. Yeah, for sure, for sure. As well as uh, uh, Tina Fey has a new comedy coming out. Jamie Foxx has a comedy coming out on Netflix, which looks like it could, you know, uh, uh, Jamie Foxx was great with the Jamie Foxx show. And Jamie Foxx in comedy, he's like just went into the world and he does a great job as a dramatic actor. But he's just like, you know what I mean? I would love to see him back in like a uh, comedy, sitcom style comedy. So he's got a, you know... Uh, uh, I don't want to say like 90s style sitcom of course but comedy show coming out on Netflix could be good but uh, I'd say for me the big one though to go back to a movie although kind of a movie TV show uh, a m- movie TV show mashup and we've talked about it before on the Geek Dip podcast but for me this whole oh, yeah. year revolves around I know it's the many saints <laughs> of Newark and I think this one has already been delayed where it's not coming out until big late time, dude. yeah it's not coming out until late 2021 but still 2021 so you know as of now anyway I think September but this is of course the Sopranos prequel story 
with uh, James Gandolfini's son playing a young yeah, Tony, dude. which I mean, really, just that right there. Whether the movie's good or not, just like seeing the Michael Gandolfini performance, I'd say, is literally to me the most interesting thing in all of the entire geeked world this year. Like, no, like, like with no hyperbole, that right there is like the story of the year to me right now. You know. Dude, not only am I excited to like watch that movie and see that kid's performance, but also just like giving me an excuse then to immediately start binging The Sopranos again. Well, like, you well, do it well throw episode or... one. Are you no, gonna no, no, no. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go chronological order. I'm gonna go okay. many Saints in Newark, leading right into the first episode. See, I'm already Sopranos. starting to plan. I, I think for my New Year's resolution for 2021, by the way, is to finally sign up for HBO Max. <laughs> so I should be able to get that yeah. one accomplished. But uh, I'm planning on doing the uh, Sopranos rewatch leading up to the big. Interesting. You know? Interesting. Which I know, rever- a Tarantino-style t- uh, time warp, however, <laughs> I feel like it'll get me in the mood for, to be extra excited by September. So, Yeah, that is the big one. We've talked about that one in tears. And, uh, I mean, then we've been talking about that one for, like, over two years now, I think. Big F! W-E-F-U-N-K. We funk. <laughs>